Okay, squeaky game, let's get it. Okay, for people that don't know, squeaky game is a game that's like with like fruit and sh and you drop the fruit. I don't know. It's like basically Kawaii 2048. So here's the plan. We need to remake squeaky game because like you can only get it on Switch. I mean, there's this version, but like we're not we're not using this version. And then once we have a game, we'll do some AI wizard sh to make it play it really well. All right, game time, baby. So squeaky game is basically just like a container, and then we got some fruit, and that's kind of it. Okay, all right. <laughs> squeaky game speed run, go. And time, that's Suica game, baby. Okay, there is like a couple more things to add, but honestly, not that much. Like we're pretty close. We are actually gonna have to do some coding here, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, now we can spawn the little c*** in and we're making progress. Okay, I know we haven't really done anything yet and uh, we literally started this like 10 seconds ago, but it's time to make it pretty. I'm talking art design. Art design with code bullet. Art design is probably one of the hardest parts of making a game, but luckily I'm not a game developer. I'm a YouTuber. So instead I'm going to do the very scientific process of watching clips on YouTube and taking screenshots of the fruit. Oh yeah, and I also stole the background art because what... Wait, what do you want me to do? Draw it myself? <laughs> okay, so that was easy. <laughs> now we got all the fruit, we need to line up the hitboxes for each of them. Luckily, all of these are just circles, so it's, so it's not exactly a Herculean task. Okay, now we need to write some basic logic. When two of the same fruit combine, they form into a new fruit. The two cherries make a strawberry, two strawberries make a grape, yeah, and so on, so on, until you get all the way to the prestigious watermelon, which is like the end goal of this game, basically. And we should have cherry combining working. If two collide... You're joking. <laughs> okay, fuck this game. If two collide, you should get a strawberry. Yay, there we go. Okay, oh, fuck me. Oh, no. Ah, ah. Okay, there we go. I don't know what was going wrong, but I just fucked with some values and voila. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be an issue later. Dude, can you not, please? I'm a good programmer, I swear. God, I hate that guy. So we got cherries that combine into strawberries. Now we just need to set up all the other fruit combinations and we're Gucci. All right, let's run it. Oh god, no, oh no, we are not Gucci. That frame rate is terrible. I think it is trying to spawn an infinite amount of fruit, which is not ideal. Oh, oh, I can't stop the program from running. Oh, and I also can't close Unity anymore. That's fine. That's a fun little feature. <laughs> using a cool 98% of RAM. That's okay. You can have it. I wasn't using that. Oh, and it crashed. Okay, well, problem solved itself. Okay, let's just hope that we save recently. And nope, that's a completely empty scene. I have never saved. Okay, I think we're back where we were and I have saved. I saved like eight times, so let's run it back. Oh, okay, well that makes things easier. Oh, now there's four, okay. Okay, it should work now. Don't explode, don't explode, don't explode, don't explode, don't explode. Oh, <laughs> yeah, looks like a car, we did it! Squeak again, baby! So in this game, you basically keep going until you lose. Like there's no end goal. You just keep going until you lose. And the game ends when the fruit the cloud boy is holding collides with the fruit in the container, which I've already implemented and really wasn't a problem. No, 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 <laughs> that's too many. Anyway, if you amp up the bouncy amount of the fruit, this death condition actually makes the game very interesting. I call my invention sweeter game, but bouncy. Since you die when something collides with the fruit you're holding, the fruit bouncing back up at you turns this into sort of like an action game. We gotta dodge the fruit, and the only way to settle them down is to combine fruits, which resets their velocity to zero. It's actually very fun. <laughs> I actually quite enjoy it. Anyway, what were we doing? Oh yes, uh, Sweaker Game AI thingy video code bullet. Okay, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm back. All right, so even though I just like copied the art, I still managed to fuck it up. Like some of the colors are just a little dull, so I wanted to make it more pretty. So yeah, I did that, and here's sort of like a little side by side. We got the new fruit, which looks like a little more pretty, a little more color. I don't know if you can really tell the- Oh, fuck off! Are you jo I just wanted to show off the fucking colors! Was that too much to ask? Don't you fucking start, Henry. You've lost dr I'm taking these. You've lost drumstick privileges. Okay, now that we've got pretty colors and stuff, pretty much all that's left is to add the scoring system, which once again, I did this through the very scientific process of watching streamers and then doing some quick math. Basically, you just get points by combining fruit of course, that's literally all you do in this fucking game. The bigger the fruit, the more points you get. And with that, I pretty much got this bad boy done. Ah, except, yeah, well, except for that. I've, um, oh, I've never seen this before. <laughs> Fatal error. Okay, that's a bit much. I think you're being a little dramatic. Look at that score, though. Whoa, a cool 41,000. Easy game. Okay, so let's actually have a look at what's going on when everything explodes. I've been procrastinating this problem for way too long. Looks like the big boom thing happens when a fruit collides with two of the same fruit at the exact same time. 
instead of only combining with one of them, it tries to combine with both, creating two copies of the next fruit tier. Here's a more controlled version of what happens. What we get is two cherries turning into two strawberries, which instantly combines into a single grape all in one frame. This isn't quite enough to cause the explosion though. For that to happen, we need the other fruit to sort of give it a little push. So in this case, it's really this right here that causes everything to go nuclear. We've got three cherries, which turns into two strawberries, which instantly combines with the other strawberry to become three grapes. The three grapes continue combining with themselves until they've reached apples, in which case these guys join the party. And now shit has properly hit the fan in a major way, reaching a cool score of, wow. Okay, it's a, it's 2.5 million. Not too shabby if I don't say so myself. Apparently reaching 3,000 is impressive. So 2.5 million? Ah, child's play. Anyway, explaining that wasn't really that important. I just thought it was cool. And you know what? It's a fucking Suica game video. Clearly your time isn't super valuable anyway. <laughs> Okay, nice one. That was good, Henry. I like that one. <laughs> okay, basically all we have to do is stop three cherries from becoming two strawberries and we'll stop the apocalypse, which is honestly only like one line of code. And look at this, it works. Magic. And with that, we've successfully cloned Suica game, which is actually super easy. Like it only took me like two days, which is a little life hack. If you don't want to pay for a new game, just fucking make it yourself. Instead of paying the, no, it's $2.99, okay. That's extremely reasonable. Okay, maybe just buy it yourself. Okay, now that the game is done, it's time to A- <laughs> So the AI we're gonna be using is called the genetic algorithm. Yeah! Basically, we're gonna simulate evolution to make a smart boy. We just test the guy out, and then if he's doing good, we say he can live. If he's not doing well, then we, we don't let him live. It's kind of like Squid Game. Really? No, not at all. But the problem is this is running really slowly. So instead of just running one boy at a time, we instead are gonna run a couple more. I love doing that. This is actually hell for my computer. This is the frame rate it's actually running at. But because I'm nice, I'll speed it up for you. Just because I'm nice, not because you would click up the video and fuck my watch time. <laughs> this is a selfless act. Okay, let's run that bitch. So initially we only start with the first 10 moves and then once we sort of nail those first 10 moves then we can move on to the next 10 and then so on and so on. We increase the maximum number of moves every five generations, which is just, I don't know, an arbitrary number that I chose. It doesn't really mean anything. Just sort of felt right, which is true for a lot of machine learning. Like it's a very vibe based art. You just do what kind of feels right. And then if it doesn't work, you change it slightly. But yeah, it's pretty hard to see what's actually going on here because everything's like two pixels wide. So let's fast forward a bit. Okay, we're now at 100 total moves. When I ran them with just completely random moves, they'd last like 100 to 150 moves. But the smarter the AI, the longer it should last, in theory. We got a best score of 787. I don't know if that's anything. Uh, yeah, my main goal for this video is to get a score of at least 3,000. I think that'll be that good. That's like the gold standard for what people are like aiming for. Like it's a big deal if you get 3,000. It would be sick if we got a better score, but yeah, I'd be happy with 3,000. So we're at like 700, which is not that. So we still got a long way to go. But that's the best score they can get with the current number of moves. They're not dying at this point. So we should be able to get a much higher score. All right, another fast forward, go. So we're now at 150 moves and we do have some players dying, which is fine. That's how the AI works. You got to get them to fail in order for them to learn how to succeed, that sort of stuff. It's like children, you got to kill a couple to make an omelet or whatever it is. But if you look closely, some of them have honeydew melons and some of them have two honeydew melons, which is very close to the... Actually, I'm just noticing that's not two honeydew melons. That's just two games with honeydew melons next to each other. It's really hard to see what's going on. I'm trying my best. <laughs> okay, anyway, fast forward, let's go. And finally, after 96 generations, we got it where it's like pretty much not improving anymore. We got a best score of over 2000, which is pretty good. Uh, not really, honestly, this is kind of shit. No one has a watermelon. No one's looking competent in any way, but I do have a plan. Okay, that didn't really work. It was all right, but it could definitely be improved. The main problem with this is I just used the score as the fitness function. Okay, let me explain. So we're gonna have a way to calculate which boys did good and which boys didn't do good. So we know which ones we have to kill off. At the moment, we are just using the score. So if a player gets a better score, it's doing better, which kind of works. But the problem is the position of the fruit is really Really important in this game. These two have the same score, but one is in a way better position. It's this one, it's this one here. Basically the strategy is you want your biggest fruit in the bottom corner so it's not blocking any of the other fruit. And you also want something that I call a fruit chain. You want your biggest fruit to be touching your next biggest fruit, which then touches your next biggest fruit to form a little chain thing all the way down. So you can have cool shit like this. Oh, 
No, the pineapple's still supposed to touch. Let me just grab this. So you can do cool stuff like this. Yeah, <laughs> we did it. So I just coded a little thing to calculate how long the fruit chain is and scale the score according to that. The scaled score also increases if the biggest fruit is in the corner. Um, and yeah, that's it. I run that bitch for like eight hours. Oh, honestly, this shit takes so fucking long. This has been such a process. But here it is. I present to you a Suica game, Suica game, whatever it is, go. actually good oh my god i was so surprised i really did expect a score of like 3000 uh, but we got final score of 4200 and something that's pretty good that's crazy we got double watermelons baby there are some things i could add to make it even better i think i need a higher penalty for death because uh at the end it kind of just killed itself it had all this space here where it could have like racked up an even better score i also think i need a higher reward for it staying in the corner because it kind of just didn't do that it just kind of fucked off and left um but yeah cool we did it let's go thanks once again to brilliant.org for sponsoring this video brilliant is your place for all things math science and computer science which if you're watching this channel is probably something you're interested in i've talked a lot about how Brilliant can teach you how to do all things AI and all that magic AI algorithm stuff, but it also has really useful courses to help you out with game development. They have a great course on vectors, which is basically how all video games are doing everything all the time. If it's a 2D game, a 3D game, a puzzle game, or an action-y shooter thing, it's gonna be using vectors. Basically, you're gonna need to know how to use vectors. And Brilliant's vectors course is a great place to learn about it. And because it's a Brilliant.org course, this bad boy has got interactivity for days. They get you to move around this cute little spaceship guy. Look at him, he's a cute little boy. To help explain all all things vectors. And this is just one course of hundreds of interactive courses, which will make you an absolute weapon at game dev and computer science in general. So if you want to support your boy and level up, ah, yeah, because the video game stuff, yeah, okay, I'm so clever. Probably because I've done so many courses on Brilliant. <laughs> anyway, go to brilliant.org slash codebullet to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days. And if you sign up for a premium subscription, this bad boy will get the first 200 people 20% off. Mwah. You're welcome. Okay, yeah, that's it. Thanks again. Brilliant. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, it was just like a little Suica game video. I, I thought it was cool. It was fun. Uh, it took way longer to do the AI than I thought. I had like a lot of problems with Unity's physics being a bit cutty, but I got it done. Um, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.